Hello and welcome to this video. Once more are we going to um, continue working on panel A2 on page 33 in the Castafiora Emerald. This amazing adventure that originally um, was created in the beginning of the 1960s by R.J. and his staff at uh, Studios R.J. Now, so so today's mission, if we should accept it, is to is to not sketch really uh, Professor Calculus but rather refine the sketch so we have already created here on the left hand side uh, in video 2 actually in 2a 2b we created this version here and now we're going to refine it in terms of line quality and um, and that sort of also includes the thickness the uh, various how should I say um, differences in the thickness of the line that we are seeing on RJ's original drawings so so as I, as you have uh, may have understood from the previous videos, um, this drawing exercise is not a, a drawing exercise in which I'm going to quickly show off my skills. Uh, this is rather uh, just the opposite. It's a very slow video or a series of videos where we actually are studying Arge's style and his characters and his line quality and we are trying simultaneously also to to um, improve our visual skills as a as a drawer so I'm 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 in it for myself here also. I'm I'm um, I see this as an exercise for myself to improve my skills in looking at one object on my left monitor and draw on my right monitor something that is as close to the original as possible and for that of course we have to we have to constantly analyze the original picture in terms of relative width of, of uh, the head and the position of the ear and the position of the glasses and the height of the moustache compared to the thickness of the hair uh, on and on like that so we sort of gradually are honing in on the the right mixture of lines that we are uh, trying to uh, accomplish so, so we are constantly refining we are uh, trying to for each stroke, we're uh, coming a little bit closer to the original art by Hergé. Alright, so, but before we start, a quick reminder then, also, that a little uh, advertisement here for, this is my own creation, uh, so I'm Announcing this ahead of time now that 987 degrees centigrade is my current project and it's a science fiction action 
thriller adventure and it is a part of the Unlimited Danger Series 1 or Season 1 I should say and in Season 1 we also have seven other volumes uh, in store projected in the future um, which all sort of create one big story of season one so that's the announcement and now we can continue with our video so we get back to Photoshop and we'll try to refine Professor Calculus and as I've said on my left monitor I have the original panel by Alger in color and I'm not showing it to you because I don't have the legal capability of doing so. I do, I do not own the copyright for, for that work so I am not showing it to you. Alright so Okay, so now uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to create a new layer and I'm going to create this above here so we are keeping us uh, refined calculus. Okay, calculus, calculus refined. maybe a small r here just for consistency okay we can fold that in as well so we have all these layers visible and now I'm going to start the probably the most important place to start is the head so I'm going to do that I'm going to start with the head I'm going to take it up to 200% and I'm doing that as well now with the original art by RG so that I can see more clearly what's wrong here or what well okay I'm now analyzing a little bit and one thing I see right now is that we have a few things to do down in the down here in this area and also the ear it's a little it's a little too roundish and also this angle is not right so we should I should have to lift it up or or I should I should change this angle okay so let's see what what do we do we we do the blue one I think for the um, for the refined so I will paint calculus in blue tinting in blue next time and the hand in blue um, like that so we so we use that as a so the red is rough the blue is refined and then we go black in the ink in video whatever it is eight or something okay so let's dig into it so first of all I'm actually before I start using my brush here I'm will have to 
do a, a sort of like an overall um, overall um, analysis of what, what's what the state of affairs is. So, so we've already spoken about this section here. So the, the ear should be a little more elongated, or uh, or it should be. This is too little, too wide, I think, compared to this. So we can do that, and the angle here on the neck there. And then we should probably take this in here, uh, just a bit here, this collar here. And yeah, that's because this angle is, is somewhat off here. So, And then I also see that the angle here, the head here, is going to fast up here. So we have to lower this a little bit. So, so the angle is not that we should lower this, but we should make this higher here. So we should, the head should go up here somewhere and then a lower like that. So we have to work on that. But this angle here with this, um, outline to the right here on his head that seems pretty solid i think apart from this section here which we have to round a bit so i think we're in a pretty good position uh, i think also the anger lines are mm, these two, these these are, are a little small, so they we have to fix these. But but in terms of their position, uh, yeah, they should be moved a little bit to to the right, and they should be enlarged. But these angle lines are pretty good to the left here, so so I will keep these. And then we have some adjustments in the tie here, but the position of it is pretty good. And the collar here, the collar line really works, but it should perhaps be a little thicker. But we'll get to that. And also this angle here is almost right, but not entirely. So we can, so we want slightly bent lines here, softly bent. Okay. Good. All right, so now let me, what's a calculus sketch? Let's, um, let's see what we have here. I'm soloing this layer here now, alt clicking, just to make sure that we see everything here. And I actually did merge them. And it seems that I did. Okay, yes. So then we can we can copy from this layer. And I think I think what I want to do is to create the outline. I mean, I, th I think that's always the most important thing to to get get right. You have to create the outline so that it fits with the original. So I'm now going to copy here and I'm going to leave a little white here because I, I am going to 
paste it and then turn it around a little bit, rotate it a little bit. I'm going to rotate this left part here upwards. So I'm copying and then I'm pasting it in my new and actually I think the smartest thing to do is just let's move this up here like that and then call that merged from part which was sketch right so we sort of that and then we can hide that okay so we now in calculus refined and we have copied the um, back of head here on its own layer and I'm pressing hitting the V key for for the um, move tool and now I'm going to rotate it to get the angle I want but as usual, Photoshop is a little, you can't, this of course is an older version of Photoshop, but, but you can't always see the exact angle until you have, you are committing. So, we also don't want it too high up. So this section is something like, maybe we can move it a little bit there. Something like, let's try another, maybe one notch more there. Yeah, it would be good to also get this rounding here automatically nice, but I'm not sure if we can accomplish, maybe we can move this a little bit there. And this isn't actually too bad. So, okay, I'm committing now, and then we can... all right so we have we can uh, okay so there's room for adjustment but i think it works pretty well okay so it's a and we can merge this we merge these two here with Control alt e as a copy not we're not destroying the originals this is important so we're working um, calculus new back of head one So here, so on this layer here was only the back of the head, and now we have merged them. And so, so I always call. I'll demonstrate how I do it. Okay. So I always I have a name for each layer, and there are basically only two names. And this layer here is the sort of resulting, the big w one I'm trying to compose. So in this case, we're working with a person. So the person is calculus. And then 
I have this dash here and then or hyphen and then I say in the name of the layer here merged and any other so so up here this is not a version again it starts with the object of the drawing and then what the change is so calculus here and calculus here are both the whole drawing of calculus but this layer here back of head if I press the alt button and click this is only the back of the head or the actually the top of the head but I'm changing the back of the head the angle of it so here so I can easily read in my layers which one is which is 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 back of head the whole drawing or is it just a part no it's just a part it's there is not there is nothing uh, there is no calculus name here so therefore the object is back of head only but here i start with calculus so all right so that's the object on the on this layer so i think that's very um that's very extremely useful if you are into the whole idea of drawing in separate layers and also if you are into the idea of editing because th this is also the, a very big topic i mean are you into editing or are you ever refining anything or are you, d you just drawing it once in 3.5 minutes and then never opening the document again if that's your sort of uh, M.O. then uh, of course I have nothing to say say it, but but if you are anything like me I'm I'm closing my Photoshop documents and I'm returning to my Photoshop documents I have 50 60 70 80 90 100 layers I have many 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 folders I have so in order to to be able to quickly locate things like like revisions or I changed some detail in the layer and w where did I do that and what did I do and, and like that so I mean it's not always I, I do it on the same on the same day or even the same week I may go back to my document a month later and, and see oh I, I want to change the nose in that character oh, okay or I want to change the color on 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 the ja jacket or uh, you know anything and for that you you have to have some um, so if, if you are a like editing type like myself then you may find that very useful advice if you're not already doing it yourself okay so we haven't even started well, uh, we haven't even started painting with the or drawing with the blue color yet but I think this was very good because now when I look at the look at the drawing here I see that it works well so this angle here looks pretty good if I can if we can keep ourselves to the left side of this line and then gradually go up here and then keep ourselves to the lower part of this line to get a smooth forehead then we almost have it I think okay so good 
So let's do that then. We are at 200% brush. Let's start doing that. So I'm now new. So this is the merged version now. Uh, so maybe I want to create. And this is the red colored. So we want a new layer, of course. So we'll call that. And now, so this will be a new version, actually. So this is calculus refined. While this is sort of, or at least until here, calculus sketch. OK. And this is some some um, we can call it calculus or that as well. Okay. And now I'm starting to draw. And of course, we want to multiply. So, although the, so before I do this, so although this is red here now, I do have this. This is a calculus R anyway because I um, I made the adjustment with with the. Uh, the red colors, so I didn't actually paint it or, or draw it with the blue colors. All right, so so I'm keeping myself to the left angle here, or the left cor the left uh, side of the street, and then I'm gradually going up. Here, looking at the other picture as well. And then this angle over here. Is much better, I think. And also this one works well. And we'll use that line as we did last time. And then we're going down here. And here, actually, actually it doesn't draw anything. There is some I'm not sure, but he has the beard coming there, and the beard should be a little closer there also. So I'm leaving that for now, and we're xing our way to back to 20% blue here, and. Okay, so now let's see here we have we have this line here and this top of the head it should be really almost almost perfectly straight until until when until
until the the bent line should begin when his left glass uh, starts but then what I want to do is I want to adjust the glasses also so so maybe the bent the bend, bent portion should start something like that there it should go something like that and then it comes And it should not be equally, it should be a little straight in the middle there also. But only slightly. And then bend nicely down there. So we should have a little see-through red here. but not that much. Okay. But it actually is a little bit more bent. Okay, let's... Little bit more. And this angle is of course the balloon maybe we should hide the balloon just to when we're doing this not a bad idea so this angle should be a little more like that And also in this old version of Photoshop, I don't have any, there's no, um, there is no, uh, how should I say it, line smoothing or anything like that. So more than just the, the anti-aliasing of course but but there's no shortcut like in clip studio paint or something like that when you when you when you have some i think it's called stabilization stabilizer or something like that, but you don't have that here so so There is no simple way of drawing perfect lines. More than actually taking a circle and, and doing it that way. But, but this is, of course, uninteresting doing that. We want to draw, or I want to draw. Maybe you don't want to draw, but I want to draw. And to, to acquire a better control of the pen, a better control of the lines, better control of of viewing artwork and approximating it into my own creation. So, so I think that's. I hope you are of that bent as well. But if you're not, then. You, you can be whatever you like. As long as you like what you're doing, then... Uh, let's see, now... Okay, so we have that... done. Let me, let me take away the red one, and let's see what we have here. Uh huh. And this can actually be so. What we want to do, and we want to actually 
modify a little bit here to drag it a little to the left more it wasn't enough so white 100 percent is better okay so now we can fix this but So now when I t take back the balloon, we get approximately this, the amount of white. And to approximate this even better, we can actually do balloon here. Um, deleted foreground covered so I'm I'm erasing now or I'm not erasing but I'm painting with white with white thank you very much white so we so I can because in the original art, of course, this line that I'm erasing now isn't visible, so I can judge, I can compare the two now better. Okay, but note here when I did this maneuver with the balloon that I, I kept the original balloon there as well, so... Okie dokie, so now we have that, and I think that looks pretty authentic. Of course, I haven't haven't uh, adjusted the thickness of the line. I just wanted to get the um, feeling for it. But I still think that this angle here isn't good enough, so we have to have to continue working on it and then we'll have to select that again so we get so this angle here isn't good enough and so we have to I'm going to has to go lower there oh now I'm totally off I'm painting on the balloon layer I shouldn't have done that so now I'm see if I'm going so long that oh there's a little left okay oh let's okay let's too many steps already okay so I am what am I doing I am let's just We'll do that. We erase it on the balloon layer and back again to the calculus draw. And we're hitting the cyan again and continuing with our brush at 20%. So we are here. We can u have that so we see better the differences with the red one. So I want to have this more like this and then as this has to come from there on it has to be No, didn't have white there, okay, let's just do this here, 
a lot of F's. Okay. Okay, let's see how this looks like in terms of angle. Angle is better. And if we fix this a little bit more to get that fantastic round of it. Okay. And now I will erase a little bit on the outside here. So. Gradually coming down. This has to be smoother here. a better curb. Better curb. And this section over here as well. Oops. Uh, going back to blue, this should be the angle a little bit different here. Something like that. And then we erase a little bit on the inside here. So I think the angle here is pretty good now on this side here. Angle is pretty good. And then this line here, it should be it should be thickest here in this curvature. And it should be thinner over here so it should go like gradually increasing its thickness when we're coming here so we actually can make it a little thicker here so it's actually just as thick as the balloon or even a notch more. So I'm where and then it becomes gradually smaller when or less thick. 
when it comes down there again. And that is the beauty of Auger's uh, inking. It's it's very subtle. It's it's not like five times as thick. It's it's here. It's perhaps one and a half times as as thick as the thinner as the thinner line uh, down here. So. This is accomplished. I was I was talking about that yesterday in the video, but um, I said something like maybe it's a brush or maybe it's this or that. But I checked it out, and it seems that he is uh, most probably using either what I said yesterday, which was a fountain pen. I th I thought it was, or is he using a dip pen? And there's uh, even some information on the net there that um, there is a special um, brand of of uh, uh, those uh, metal things that you put into your dip pen that um he used so so i don't know but but according to but so so what i'm seeing though is that this is a it's a pretty this effect that uh, can be seen especially on the the anger lines it's it's, it's pretty obvious to me at least that this is kind of some kind of steel blade or steel. Um, it has a special name, but it escapes me for the moment. But those metal um, small blades that you put in into your dip pen, um, or a uh, some some version of a, of a fountain pen with like a calligraphy kind of feel to it. Or maybe he's just doing it uh, manually, like if you, like in one of those old rot ring pens, or like a, like a Copic uh, style. Uh, uh, like a ink pen, Mecha uh, it's called. Uh, it's not called a mechanical pen, but it's called a technical pen, I think, <laughs> in English. So maybe he 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 is doing like just like that. That he has a fixed width uh, ink pen, and then he's filling it in manually. But I don't. It doesn't look like that in. Uh, the the strokes are so nice. I think it's hard to to make them um, as as um, beautiful as as they are by manually doing that. So I think it's uh, more reasonable to to assume that the line quality is created by just one stroke. And that it is the angle of the fountain pen or the dip pen that determines the actual thickness. So if I were to simulate this, I would probably use a something like a uh, Lamy. I have one of my Lamy pens, fountain pens, with uh, either the 1.1 variant the calligraphy 1.1 or the calligraphy 1.5 1.9 the calligraphy 1.9 uh, is is too too broad so i don't think that that would be 
so probably with the 1.5 uh, we could simulate it if, you, if, we, if we were to draw on paper so that could be an exciting thing for one of you guys to investigate which one uh, has the desired result I will also myself check that out um, if I can do it on paper one of these days and then I can scan it in and we can make a particular we can make a new video about that how to assimilate that and like that all right so I'm just going to take a quick break and stop the the video here and um, see you in in one second all right so we are back again here and we are now going to show the the refined or the the beginning the the last red image here so we can compare mm, and it seems pretty good as I said um, and let's remove it and I can but still even 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 now there's still some adjustment to be made and so we're continuing here I'm still not entirely happy with with this here so we have to just have to go a little and then it's going to fall down there fixing and tricksing this goes in a little bit there all right So what I'm doing is simply that there is a there is a certain this midsection here should should be a little straight here in the and then this should be also up here And then sort of it begins to turn I think this angle also is a little adjustable if I may express myself like that that looks better a 
next on this is a little should go down more there okay gradually getting there So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a slightly bigger diameter here of this of this rounding. And maybe there is some slight tweaking more as well to be done, but but I think for now we can accept that. And then another question is is this distance here is the 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 length of this one here is it long enough that is the question i'm not entirely sure but maybe it's also because Because there is, I haven't. Uh, there's no hair here. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, okay. So if we get back, okay. What we'll do is we'll we'll go back to the white, and I'll first of all, I'm going to erase the inner line more here anyway and then as we see here the hair should come higher up well you don't see it here on on the image I'm showing you but but I see this in my because the angle here of the hair is not entirely right. So the angle of the hair should be different. So let's um, let's fix that while still being red here. Okay, let's um, let's make a lasso thing out of this one. Let's just take the hair as a separate item well we can well I'll, let's just take the hair and not the ear and we'll see if we can oh see if we can rotate it so i lost my selection but if i do control z I can get my selection back again like that and then I copy it and I paste it so we have hair here only and then I do a V for move tool and then I am going to rotate it clockwise so that it's it's going to be parallel to the glasses that is my objective it's going to be parallel to the glasses the top the top portion uh, i mean both portions they should this the upper and the lower should be parallel and they should go parallel with the with the glasses uh, this construction here on the side whatever is called if you know what it's called just write it in the comments so you can teach me some english 
Okay, so and now I'm just checking that the that the glasses angle is right, and it isn't. There's some small adjustment needed on that too. So I'm now making this angle a little different than the the glasses here. So I think that's better. And then, of course, this one should go higher up. This was one thing that I saw on the... So if I divide the hair in two, if I... on, on the height, if I divide... or if you can say like that, the height of the hair here divided in two should be equal to the distance so so this distance is half of the hair height so if we want to accept the hair as it is then we have to move this up pretty much and then the glasses when when they come into the hair they should do so above the middle line here. So, so actually the glasses should come higher up. And that fits also with the idea that this angle also has to be, the glasses angle also has to be adjusted and when we adjust that angle then it will be higher up so but I actually want to take the hair higher up still So what does that mean? If we keep if we keep that distance. So when when on the original drawing when this line continues it hits the this corner under here, the in this corner of the eyebrow, it hits that corner. So, I think there, I think there is, is probably good enough. Maybe his glasses should be bigger also. Ah, it's probably the scale there. The scale is off. His glasses should be a little bigger than I have. Or at least his left glass should be a little bigger. And his eyebrows should be corrected also. Okay, good. So now this is, and I think actually we'll turn it a little bit more there. So we're going something like that. Maybe two up there. Okay. And Yeah, we'll we'll, te we'll test test with that, and now we're going to do another merge here, copy merge, and we ha now have new hair, 
and this is still the red one right so okay and now when we have corrected that one we can we can erase the, the blue line a little bit here because the hair will be here good at least we are and then we can actually take this a little in here also okay So what we see here in the on the glasses is that here is a, a, like a place where we actually can see that this is some kind of a fountain pen or or dip pen because here is here is um, the thickness is thicker at the max here down here at six o'clock here and at 12 o'clock here the, this so 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 when he goes around here so then then at one o'clock it's a little less thick and then a little less thick and a little less thick and then it starts getting a little thicker and a little more thick and then you have most thick here and most stick up here also so it's or something it, it's not actually 12 o'clock it's one o'clock and seven o'clock uh, has the most thickness it actually goes like this sorry about that so um, okay all right so now I'm going to draw with my blue here again and I am going to put this glass here a little to the right but then I'm going also going to make it a little bigger slightly and I'm going to increase its thickness a little bit also here to emulate what RG is doing and we have this other And the same is true for this line here that's thicker at one o'clock. Maybe we can just make this more aesthetic here, if possible. And then he has a almost not visible but straight thing here, metal thing here probably um, just above the nose. And the nose is also a little should also go a little more up here so and I think we talked about that last time that it should be almost like an ellipse that is 
but then he, he makes some thing here also there that sort of hooks hooks into the mu moustache here I'm not sure what that is if that is a if that is actually a separate stroke that if he were not to have a moustache perhaps it, it sort of would have gone down uh, beside the mouth there but I'm not sure exactly where the purpose of that but. okay and then we are going to change the angle a little bit here with the strokes they should be slightly pointing downward on the right hand side I think that will work and then we have the strange construction on the I'm not sure what it is here but if it's ink that sort of spilt or something I don't know it's hard to okay and then on here when in terms of this eyebrow here to the right should be more roundish here and should go lower down than the red one I previously did and the ang angle up should be higher there so I have to correct that now the angle should go up something like that so looking up at the blue only yes and then and then th this angle here should be as it was in the red or even even more in so white a hundred percent so let's should almost turn into going a little to the right there Let okay and then the left eyebrow should be positioned as it is but this stroke here should be a little higher like that and then and then this angle here should be much more up here and the stroke itself the line itself should be much thi thicker two times as thick as the other one or even three times So this left eyebrow is thicker than the the other one. I'm not sure about the reason for that, but maybe it's maybe it's because it's closer to us that he does that, or maybe because he's doing it only on he's doing some specific thing calculus I mean calculus is, is maybe yeah I don't know all right and then we should also adjust this these strokes here they should not be as big as the, they are uh, should be slightly okay 
and then the angle here on these strokes is should be a little more pointing down to the right And this last one up here should be almost rectangular. Or like a dot. Okay. So one thing here is that should be a little thicker line there and maybe they should be positioned also a little to the right there I have to erase a little bit on the left and it looks like he's he really has a flat blade flat uh, that is pressing down in a specific angle this is also visible up here so uh, and this can be accomplished with a fountain pen calligraphy fountain pen so, okay, you can make this a little darker. And a little closer. Like that. So many strokes. All right, and then we have his nose here. I think that's not so bad, but of course we have to fix the upper portion here, which is so that round rounded shape will have to it have to go all um, the whole way into the glasses frame the frame of the glasses and the angle up there should be something like that and the angle down there should be a little less almost horizontal Okay. All right, let's Okay, another thing we should do right now is we should compare the nose. So the so on on the original drawing the nose the nose goes if if we take the the if we take this point of the nose the the sort of like the under under his nose here 
and if we drag this, if we go to the left, then we we arrive at the the intersection between this point of the ear and this uh, metal uh, construction from from the the glasses the glasses hold the holder of the glasses whatever it's called so if i go to if let's say we make a new guideline guidelines layer and we do it green as usual then I sh should and I keep my shift down now when I'm is this really horizontal yeah, look look at that. So so this is where the ear will meet the the metal uh holder of the glasses. So that means that we have to We have to take this and we have to I think it's actually yeah I think we well, let's do I think it's a yeah we're lifting up the ear a little bit and maybe even the hair We'll have to see about that. We do that first. We lift up the ear. Ear. So the ear has to go up here. Then it also has to be higher, so I'm I'm now going to drag it down and increase its vertical size. And then we are going to rotate it a little bit also. Maybe even one step more to approximate the angle. Okay. And now what we're going to do is go back to the red layer there and we're going to Take this metal part of the glasses and copy that. Metal. Call that. And then we're going to select it and we're going to rotate it up to get the right angle questionable whether something like that and then we're going to move it up in the middle of the glass
Yeah. Something like that. And now we're going to see how the hair fits in. And so first we're going to merge as a copy and we're going to say calculus or with new metal plus ear so that we have everything in one layer there for that and I can see now that we did that There's something wrong here, but w what? Let's. Yeah, I think the hair should go a little higher up. yeah right okay so okay let's draw a little more so the hair should go and I still I haven't I haven't even started to oh whoops well we are we don't want it green we want the cyan and we're going to lift it up a little more and it's going to be parallel with and now I'm using a hundred percent I don't want to do that I want to use 20 percent okay so we are maybe we can fill in the ear first and when this line comes here, the ear cannot go any, any it, it has to stay on the right hand side of that line. So let's go down here. And the ear lobe shouldn't be as big. Just a small indent there, and then we have a line that goes something like this, and then it goes down a bit. So the hair comes a little lower than the glass the metal of the glasses and then goes down up here and then the hair actually comes higher up than that and parallel to the f to to the head here like that, and then we should actually it should stick out so if we're counting from this point here we should have more hair to the left than to the right so has to go out a little more but then of course the complaint is that then we will
Okay, then, okay, then it actually has to go more than down here. If we're going to keep the proportions of everything, then that's where struggling against many there are many um, obstacles and, and one of them is, is scale so so I'm not sure exactly how we're going to tackle this but I think what the main idea is that his head is somewhat too little or is on on the in the vertical dimension there should be more space down down here so so our original measurement wasn't too bad, which we did in the previous video, that, that uh, his head was originally taller. So I think that was a, um, a correct decision. So we probably, yeah, we, ha we, we will have to adjust this we have to push down a little bit here and um, okay good so let's do refine this uh, okay not not the blue we want the white thank oh, oh okay I see we have to get the white so we have one white layer and one blue layer am I painting on the wrong one yes I'm painting on the wrong one Of course I'm painting on the wrong one. Ah, oh, my goodness. Uh, all right, so let's... We, we will lasso ourselves out of this situation. Because they're not enough undo steps to undo everything so I'm co co copying this and I'm painting it above my blue layer and then I'm hiding it and then I'm just uh, cleaning it up here instead my original plan here and just plain white with the pencil tool so it's a little the lines are not so beautiful but we will adjust that and the guidelines the green there is okay So this happens to, at least to me, now and then, so we have to be able to handle it. So now we have the blue on one layer again here. So let's merge that. Oh no, okay, I did. So this was on the, that layer too. Where is Tintin? Is Tintin? He's not in any of those. Okay, good. 
So what happened was just that I, when I have merged these two, I have to reinstate multiply by hitting my button, and then you see everything else as well that is under it, because now we are over on the top here. So we, so the refined, all these refined layers that that we're working on now are. Uh, they are above tinting, they're above, above the old hand, they're above all the others. So, so whenever I merge two layers, um, it doesn't matter if... I think it doesn't matter if whichever um, layer mode they are in. They will always become normal when you merge them. So if one layer is normal and the other is multiply, then they then the resulting layer will be normal. If both of them were multiply, they will still be normal. I think that's how it is. If you if you have any other experience, you you may um, tell me in the comments. Okay, good. So now we have merged. We didn't merge them. Or? Okay. Yeah, that, that, that. Okay, here it is. Good. So now we have, uh, we are on this layer and the old here with the, with the blue here is We have to just uh, not see it. <laughs> right. Okay. So now we're going to do what I said before. That we're going to also change this angle here a little bit. This has to go closer to his ear, and it has to be longer. So we have to go down there or something. And also on this side here, we have to go down a little bit. And what I'm doing now here is that I'm moving this down, down, so, so that I can easier just copy. So that is my plan, V tool, and so I will be correcting Question is how much the areas are pretty good. I don't think I can may or or maybe it is that the ear is a little bit smaller, is is not as high. So then we'll get more space there. So I think we'll settle there. And we'll start drawing here. Um, a tiny bit down and Going down and this 
this goes a little outward here tiny tiny bit I think and this one goes parallel to the other one and then these lines are pretty good that now I'm painting on that layer again Holy Moses, okay. Let's see if I can undo that then. How far we will get only there, okay. I'll just do it here also then. also parallel with the two other lines like that and then so it should go a little to the left there. Oops. And which angle should go up there? Should come down. And the tie should be very small there and goes up there so one thing we can note is that I think the, the the idea is that you cannot cut the tie on until a while after it it's in its thinnest um, shape so which which is why he has two-thirds of the tie above that point and one-third of the tie down so 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 he doesn't cut it there he cut he cuts it down here in order to get that shape visible in the in the panel so whenever we are cutting something, we, 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 which is the which is the point at a minimum that we can uh, sort of move out of the frame, how much can we allow to move out of the frame? And I think this is the we cannot allow more than this to move out of the frame because we w we want to have a little space here to show the tie and this also naturally uh, uh, moves the this uh, this line from the collar uh, the distance here between the panel border and the the um, this line here is now uh, long enough it's far enough that we don't get any um, interference or, or uh, because it's yeah right okay so let's see what we have when this okay so I forgot to draw this line here let's redraw this line once more uh, 
Okay, but now in the right layer, so... Okay, good. And now we can fill in the other lines here as well, and we can adjust them. And this line should actually start a little above there. And it should have some small shape first there, not go straight down, but... should follow approximately but this has a slight rounding here so slight curvature to this line here so like that and then this looks pretty good and then we should but then the, there's a small bump here coming a little quicker a little bump little and the pen is also a little thicker here good on that side and then and perhaps even well I think it may be pretty good actually and this line goes a little to the right of the red line And this other line comes from a third of the color height or something like that and then goes diagonally down there to some and this angle approximately. I have to Erase on this side here because like that, and it's a so this is slightly thicker, this one, than the than the um, line next to it to the left uh, but then the this line here is even thicker so this is the thickest of these three lines that we have here Okay, so and this should be more bent here, not just because of tinting to the right there, but but then the actual angle should be. inside here the, these two lines here the, it should look something like this a little bit smoother so we have to adjust it again here to get some nice curvature here going right and then oh we forgot it on the left side here we should have it's the moving down here okay good and then we are continuing it should originate here from here and it should go a little more to the right there something like that
maybe a little less like that and then we'll erase it okay let's see how that So it's a very slight curvature that we want to that's not entirely bad so I think that's doable and then what we also want to do is we want to accentuate that his color is his color is um, has a thicker line here, quite quite thick here. So we want to be sure to okay, and then we have. goes a little up there okay and also of course the the uh, at at the bottom here there's also thicker lines So we are preparing for the inking, we can say, to actually to be show show where where we want it, right? And then we just have to transform a little bit here. We have to have another angle here on this line here to the right has to go down and then it has to go up so we fill it in a little bit there Okay. And we are, while we are at it, we are going to adjust this line here as well. A little bit like that. And we are going to... Let's see why we want some white, and we want to go in there a little. And as I as I said before, we want to have a l just a tiny, tiny bit less tall ear. And I'm going to adjust this left here now and make it a little.
course, this to the left here, here will be completely black later on, so we, we don't have to make too much. Oh, we can just take away a little bit here, just, just to, as a handiwork, we Okay, 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 okay. Maybe we can clean this up also well, while we are at it. This red nonsense here. <laughs> so it looks better. And it's just a refined version anyway so but but still it's it's nice to have everything clean and tidy and this line here is wrong That's better. Okay. And away with the red there. Away with the red. And we can actually this line we can just we can just put that over there and go almost straight down here. like that okay 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 and now then we'll just let's see should we use the okay so what we will do is before we moved it down let's take that beard and transfer it. I have a hunch that the beard has to be even bigger, a little just okay. A taller, I mean, taller. Or maybe not, but okay, let's keep this outline. for now and then we can and then we're going to convert this outline of the moustache to another but we'll, we'll do that next time with a more jagged appearance and also the hair there there will be a wavy kind of hair uh, Okay, and now we are going to have a little, little, little wider mouth. Not much, but a little wider. And then we have the we have a rounded top here of the beard which goes down to here, right? So it goes down to there. And then also that will we will fix in next but the, but the tip will sort of hang down all the way down here so we are just marking the 
the main area here. Where we will create some waviness. Okay, so that's like that. We can clean those lines up there. Got some nice professional calculus. Okay. then the moving down of the collar and downwards also looks good and now we will take the those lines here in the face so we have we have two Okay, we have to we have to do the glasses. Glasses first, the, or the metal the metal piece that holds the glasses. Okay, and then when that is drawn, we want a small thing here and a small thingy there at approximately half the diameter the radius of the glass of one glass here away here from that and then we want a another stroke here also under it so these strokes go together. Okay. And then at a little different distance here we have these two lines that we are now just moving a little bit to the left. And this should not be as long. Should be a little. Less. Let's see how that looks like without. Yeah, okay. And then these two lines there also a little to the left. moving them a little bit to the left and there should be more white space in between these two lines than in between those two lines up up there so we will check go solo here on that one uh, and then distance here should also change so these, this should be f even further apart. Okay, and then they they should go almost vertical. Hmm. Okay. Almost vertically. What? How can this be? <laughs> uh, all right. Coming up 
Hitler. And this one should be thicker still here. Good, good, good. So, so then we only have the um, the anger lines. Where did those go? My goodness, where did they go? They're still there. Still there. Okay, but we should have them when they're not moved down. Okay, good, that's good. So we can we can add them there. Okay, and then so I'm correcting the angles a little bit now. So remember what I said before. So maybe we should do this. We should do them on the left hand side first because these were these were uh, better in terms of in terms of um, oh hold on hold on before we start doing this. Before we start doing this, we will now reappraise the position of Professor Calculus. And because his, his over here to the left, we are now much closer to the frame than in the original picture. So that means we, we've done some something wrong. And we want to know what did what what kind of stupid thing have we done? That is the questiona. What's wrong with this picture? So the length, let's see what the, we have a good thing. The length of the length of him or, or the, the width of his neck. Let's take that. Should be approximately no, he he should be thicker than his his neck line. Oh, his neck line here should be thicker than his, or they should be approximately the same, which I think they are. But maybe it's a. I think for first. I think it's uh, relatively speaking. The hair looks bigger in in relation to the width of his head here, and to those angles. It looks. So I think what we will do here is we will. And also the ear looks a little too big. It's maybe only 5% or something like that, but still 
let's so if we are making the scale a little less then I think we'll we'll be closer to the actual So I think an, uh, uh, one important line here to follow is that the back of his head should sort of continue on his ear here so that should go in a little bit there but but basically it should it should be just continuous it's, it get, it's getting like a circular shape to it although it get it it's it's a little too much in here perhaps for it to be a, a perfect circle but but still I made this a little smaller now and I think we'll move it down a little bit there something like that so that takes us in a little bit but still we are we are a little bit off so the question is, did we position calculus correctly the first time? So I'm going to, is he actually, let's see if I have a ruler here somewhere. Where are my rulers? the ruler. I'm going to measure this on the screen here. So Professor Kekulis is right. Shoulder is 9.8 from the left frame. 9.9 .9 on my monitor. And it's only 9.2 from the right hand side. So he's more than half, half across. So he's actually ending a little over the center line there. Okay, so, uh, so what I'm saying is that um, this point here let's go in so, oh. this point here I measured 9.8 from the left and in in the original uh, drawing but I'm here I'm only at 9.6 or something so we do have possibility here to move him and but then we have to first merge into a copy And then we're going to mark that as uh, and then we're going to move right like that. 
so. So we're going to move it to the right. To where approximately to 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 where Tintin's also this becomes very good then. Okay, and then we're going to adjust the left shoulder here. I see now is the one we can adjust here to get even better. So let's make another copy again and. Retouched and we are back to brush 20% and I think actually I want this point a little higher here and then I'm going down from there and then I'm also moving this point up here. So actually I think these lines are pretty good, so I will lasso them. And I'll just move them up. So these lines here are, I think, pretty, pretty good. So this is the shoulder, which we are moving up, because what we want is to have this line of the shoulder is going to intersect at the corner of the panel border. So. right so we can paint on that perhaps we can adjust the lines a little bit angle then it let's see if we can And it comes on a little like that, yes, but not the more steep like that still. Something like that. But not as thick line. So the, the length of this upper part here should be approximately one third. And then this lower portion should be two thirds. So I think we're pretty good. Pretty good off here. And then there should be a gradual diminishing of the thickness here when we go down so it should be thickest up here in this section here. <coughs> perhaps a little higher up Do 
just a tiny, teeny weeny little up like that. Okay, something like that. And let's on the right, so we have a hundred percent here. And of course, this hand will be blue later on also and tinting will be blue also <laughs> but uh, but this is Professor Calculus hand presumably this is uh, you never know could be someone else's hand perhaps uh, all right <laughs> and we might erase these lines here for good but we can do it with the brush so in order to get a smoother line and the angle of this should be more like that so it's a, it's not a thick line this is the Oops, oh, I, I made a mistake. And then it should go down there. So. Okay. So what do we say about that? It's not, it's not so bad. And then we, of course, we should have something in his ear also that kind of. But maybe we can first let's merge them as a copy and just uh, fix neck. And then we are going to do the ear. Okay, good, good. No, we're not going to do the ear. We are going to do the hair again. Because when I'm looking at the picture right now I s clearly see that I, uh, the hair is too far out here now so and we will fix that now so I'm copying well I can copy this also pasting and I'm moving this layer in towards the ear So we get the, the right area. I'm still not entirely happy with the angle here of the hair, but so I'm moving. But let's take it there for now and then we can do the final adjustments when we're inking. But area wise, I think we are 
pretty good. Now, if if it's if it's if we shouldn't perhaps, if his ear is good, then we are good. Basically, okay. And then we merge. And this is a better approximation, at least. And now we are very good, in very good shape for the the panel. I didn't uh, I didn't measure it by that, but sh I should have. But um, so so we are in. So maybe maybe even we we could adjust it a little more then now that I see here so but let's do the white let's first erase these guys here now let's rename it again here adjusted hair okay and then we continue adjusting a little bit here with blue cyan 20% and we have white 100% and let's go back to the blue here again like that and we have a white 100% that and blue twenty percent brush like that's very simple and and even this line may be a little maybe we can adjust it a little bit in there so it goes more straight up there and then the the ear itself should probably be like that okay so we're fixing his ear a little bit there also and now perhaps we can insert the little lines here when we have a, approximately insert the little lines here inside the ear and these should end this line should end here somewhere And there should be some tweaky tweaky here. And this should go up. Thicker here. It should aha uh -huh, it should go down first there and then he goes back a little and makes a little u turn and then down not so much but something like that And this should also not be visible. Just on the limit there. And here should be less. Yeah, something like that. And this angle here should go back in, up. Should 
so it should go up again a little there. Okay. Not so bad. Okay. So we had X and a hundred. And clean this up here also as well. A little more. Okay, I'm saving that now. And so that we have an ear and so now we only have the angle lines left the angle lines all right let's see if we can find them again here and of course we should have multiply on this layer here so we can see them And let's do those on a separate layer. We are going to use a separate layer. I'm holding Alt down and dragging up a white layer on top here. Anger lines. Or whatever it's called. If you know the correct name, Please make a comment. All right. So this seems to be very good. I'm going up to 300% now. And I will do so also on the original over here. 300%. I have my original here to the left. Okay. And we are now on blue layer and it looks but I should have blue also on my brush. I'm on an anger line layer. So this angle should come down a little bit and the line should be a little longer than the one I sketched but that angle is nice and that angle is also nice and the distance to the head is almost perfect I think and then we have this other line here, which I drew too far down. Because the distance between this angle line and the hair should be approximately half the distance between these two. So I have to move it up to around here so that this distance take approximately half of that should be left to the hair there and then there's some some strange his his fountain pen tip has I don't know what he's doing here, man. But it's 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 very rounded to. It's like the Zorro's mark or something. I don't know. But it's beautiful, nevertheless. And he's pretty close to the border here now. And you also have some tweak here at the very end here. So tweaking our way. And this should be quite uh, thinner 
this end here. So, so this, I mean, this really looks like it's it's uh, done with a metal tip here. Whether a fountain pen or a dip pen, I don't know. But so I think we can tentatively c conclude that that it is a metal artifact, so to speak, or as a metal. And then we have this angle line here. which I think is is quite close to the hair here but well and both close to the hair and both close to the um, frame frame of the panel here so it's a quite unusual position here But let's see. So this, as as you can see in the red here, this was parallel to, or it it continued where the hair was, and uh, it should be like that. But I don't know. Maybe maybe it, I'm too close to the. Oh right 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 right. So I have to the uh, I have the. Uh, the blue on the red okay so if I solo this layer here and I remove the blue here and it just is just, just getting very messy white 100% and why is this locked now okay so so if we remove that, because I painted this on the wrong layer, so it doesn't distract us from the real one. Alt down, click to. Don't tell me that we have. Oh, it's on another layer as well. Let's see, we have angle lines. No. So it is on. That layer. Okay, let's do like that instead. So let's just temporarily remove that and go back to our angle lines. And we'll draw on this line here, on this sheet here with our blue 20%. And we are at B. We have to be parallel to the hair and the head. We have to be pretty close to the panel border. And our line has to go approximately so. And then it has to go in quite close to the hair, like that. And the angle here should be even more. Oops. And we should adjust. A 
just a bit here. And gradually something like that and then we should have some construction down here and let's see what I did down there it's all right but it should be higher up so let's uh, let's use our higher up and well, maybe not that higher up, not a little higher up. But something like that, and then, and then we, we he should these lines should should have a, a slight bent they they should be slightly bent and then they should be bent like that and then they come again bent inwards or upwards or how to say it like that And we'll hide the red layer. And that this line should be a little longer here. It's like in it should also end it should have a, a it should be a thinner at the very end there. And this line should also be thinner. So thicker, and this should be thick, thicker as well. So we get that lightning kind of look. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's not too bad. And then on the right hand side, we do the same thing. Although this time, we know we observed last time that there was a quite it was t just too much discrepancy between uh, the, ang the the angles and and the sizes mostly. So we can uh, let's just use that anyway. Uh, so we will just continue here. I think this w first one was all right. It should start slightly above the eyebrow there and but it, it the angle should be more a little more up like that and then it should go more up there three degrees or something more up <laughs> That's one, and then we have the other one there, and then uh, here I see also now that, that there is a metal thing here on this side also, peeping out here. So it's this construction here on the uh, opposite side. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. 
All right, so we have the glasses there, and then this line should also be pointing a little more up, but and, and it should start somewhat down here or something like that instead. So if we, we use the same, and it should be a little longer. So we do this, something like that, and then another line like that. We fix it up a little bit with the white. And also on this side here. So thinner line at the end here. Uh-huh, okay. And then of course we have the the actual balloon tail coming in here, but we don't I don't I'll I'll uh, do that next time when we're doing the hand. We have more time to do it then. And then uh, let's see here we have this line. This looks very good, although in terms of the vertical position, but but there's still the length and also the horizontal position that we have to take into consideration. So we have to start there or something. And then we are better off. Go down there and then we have another of those Zorro's mark. Whatever they are. Something like that. And then at the height of the very mouth, and but with less less angle than this one has there. So down something like that. And then a little wavy there. And then the last line. And finally, let's see. So if we do the guidelines here again, so the idea here is that these are equi, how do you call it, equally distanced from from the head. At least these ones are, and these ones actually are that too. Not from the head, but from the sort of closest. Uh -huh. So this, is, so so he he seems to be counting this distance here, but here he's counting on the uh, the head. So so he he sort of follows the the outline in as it is drawn. And uh, what I can see. So maybe this blue line should be a little further away than, or maybe uh, the opposite. Maybe this one should be a little closer. But that seems to be the plan. 
and that's nice to know okay back to the angle lines and so when we're doing this last line we are sort of starting at the maximum when, when, when the um, color here is turning we're starting at at this point where it turns the most so to speak and we're going down oh not month with cyan please okay and we're going down and this this is not as long lines as in the one uh, immediately above there but it's a slightly different touch to them should go a little more there and back to a little white again we can get, get some reasonable feeling here with these lines and a little white down here also perhaps and here is also the down here is also the is, is quite thick this stroke here is quite thick And there's some special touch there. With so I think this is a this is a good indication that when when he holds his pen in, in a different angle, just like a calligraphy pen, you get a broader stroke. than if you're holding it in another angle. Okay, good, good. Okay, now let's just uh, take away the red layer there and we can take away the guideline layer and we go down here We have 200% there, so I'm going to go down 200% on my panel to the left here. Um, okay. So we have a reasonable, I think, version of... Maybe a little too close here, but... Uh, maybe a little too close. Oh, well. Something like that, and let's make it a little... Okay, so I think that's... It's just that the angle is a little off. Okay, that's better.
and then we're just going to fill in the head here which I'm, I didn't do or I erased it for some peculiar reason because mostly RJ is, is not breaking up his lines he usually is pretty he, pre he connects his lines pretty much all the time so okay so I think we'll we'll merge these and we will consider um, ang um, merged anger lines and we will consider this a nice version so far and we are going to continue of course next time with with um, with a real uh, well w with a refinement of the hand and refinement of well next time it will be tinting I think actually and then we'll do the hand in, in the next one so that's all for now I think and um, see you in the next video and uh, of course uh, if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and I hope you've had a really good time. Thank you very much. <laughs>